What's going on everyone? I'm in the truck headed to Huntsville, Texas. We're gonna go to Huntsville High School today. The students there have a state competition they're trying to train up for. So I'm gonna see if I can show them a little something something on a combo weld and show you guys what uh what a welding program here in Texas looks like because we we do it we do I think we do it right. Now we're here in Huntsville, Texas at Huntsville High School and I'm here with Jeff Stockwell, the lead instructor here on campus. And I've got to say, Jeff, you got a nice place here. When I was in high school, I didn't have none. You got a, a massive plasma table here. You got iron workers, you got welding booths for days. These kids are doing plates, they're doing pipes, stuff that they normally are getting taught in college. Why are you trying to get the leg up? We wanted to produce kids that could go into industry and be very successful. We are dual credit through Lone Star College in Conroe. So I have kids, that, some kids will go to Conroe to get their associate's degree because it's something that they want to have, they want to have that, that degree. Sure. I have kids that go straight to work. And I have several kids that do attend trade schools. We've had kids at Arc Lab. Got a couple kids looking at Precision this year and then a couple kids are actually headed to Arkansas Elite for their contest. Speaking of contests, you got me here to help with these students on their state level competition. Today we're going to be showing them a 3G combo weld, TIG yes. and STICK. TIG and STICK. Let's do it. Alright, so we've got our pieces of 3 8 plate. Y'all are pretty familiar with this. We're going to go for a 1 8 gap today. This is the same wire that I'm going to use to put the root in. We're going to be going shooting for like a flush to like a 16th inch reinforcement for this root. As far as my amperage here on this Lincoln Invertec, we're gonna be running somewhere around 100 to 125. 125 might seem a little hot for an open route, but with this gap, it welds pretty good. All we're gonna do is put a little nugget right here on the side, put a nugget over here, and bounce back and forth till we got a tack on it. So I'll get a puddle on one corner, put a nice little daub of metal, then come over to this other plate, get a puddle, Put a nice daub over there, come back, bridge it across. Kind of work that torch over, make sure that tack is all fused and solid, and then you could take it off. At this point, you will, in fact, take out this wire, okay? You can see that the gap is a little tighter towards this side where the tack is. That's gonna happen every single time. And if you give it a moment, it might even shrink a little bit more. I want this to be a little bit wider, so by the time I work from bottom to the top, it'll shrink up a little bit. I know that's gonna happen because it happens every stinking time. So, I might even give it just a skosh more wiggle room and then tack the same way. Put a daub, bridge those across, and now we've got our fit piece, right? I know where my gap was a little bit wider, so I want that to be my top. Again, with the time competition, you don't need to call for your homie over there to help you tack it. We're gonna turn the machine up to 200 amps and just tack it with just a torch, right? Don't need any filler metal. I'm gonna use that tack that was already there. Melt and tacked. It's super quick, super easy. Happens so quick because we're at 200 amps, right? Crucial part here, don't forget to turn your machine back down. 125, here we go. Let's put a root in. So I'm gonna take this wire, touch the plate. I'm just gonna sit on it. I'm gonna get it nice and hot, introduce that filler metal now. And I'm doing just the tiniest little steps. The biggest thing is I'm giving that rod time to soak in there. We're slow, we're steady. You see my thumb on my filler metal? I'm, I'm pushing on it, I'm applying pressure. The only reason why I'm doing that now is because I'm using this eighth inch gap where that wire does not go through the actual gap, but I still need those edges to break down. I'm applying pressure so I can hopefully get that wire to get some reinforcement. But your root pass should not be wider than the gap that you have. Let's take a look. Now right, you see the pretty color, nice and gold. Okay, that, that coloration there is from that nice consistent travel speed. And again, this, on this machine, I'm at a sticking straight up to this 125. I wasn't in any hurry. Slow and say, I'm watching that puddle. The puddle's got to sink. If it's lumpy, I'm not moving forward. I'm not, I'm not going any more forward until I see that puddle and that wire sink into the groove. If it's not sinking into the groove, I need to go slower, I need to turn my heat up. One of those two things, okay? The way you're gonna keep your wire in your puddle the best is maintaining your arc length with this tungsten pointing in. If you notice that you start leaning back, your wire is gonna run away from you. You're gonna ball that wire up, it's gonna drop bombs into your weld, right? If you start putting your wire too flat like this instead of like that with some pressure, it's gonna run up and away, right? So, and if you want more reinforcement, open the gap up. 
just a little with the cutoff wheel, just Now we're gonna restart. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit more, but I reckon it's somewhere around 135. See how far back we're at? Nice and chill, nice and chill, no wire, no wire, no wire. Get to the edge, see that roll back? Then we push our wire in, right when we see that roll back. And I just went up an amperage, at least 10 amps. For me, it's definitely allowing me to wet in there a little bit more. I don't have to press on it as much for it to like sink. So I'm liking this heat a little bit better for this gap with this machine. But see how close my arc length is with the tungsten? Watch what happens when I lean back a little. Less control, right? See, like I don't have like that little wire wants to ball up. I don't have any control. That was from just lifting my tungsten up an eighth of an inch. That's why it's important to be looking down in this position because you can see the height of that tungsten a lot easier. What do you guys think of that route compared to the first half? It's off, it's poking out more than... It's got more reinforcement. That wire was easier to break in and sink through with the hotter amperage, but this wire has deoxidizers and stuff in it like silica that comes in, grabs out any kind of trash and floats it to the surface. So you, I'm sure you've seen it before, the little glassy stuff on your MIG welds. It's the same stuff that's in here, right? So if we, they're on the surface and we weld over them, they're gonna keep coming to the surface. If you want it to flow easy, just give it a jimmy. All right, now if your root is lumpy, bumpy, has holes in it, you will fix it now, here and now. This will be the time to do it. But this is clean, right? You see the front of this is super clean. There's nothing, nothing really to, grind or clean up. But if you have a bunch of bumps and the backside looks good, grind the bumps down, make it flat. See how flat that is? Make sure it's flat before you continue. If you want a nice smooth flat weld, you need something nice smooth and flat to weld over. We're gonna put in a hot pass now at 200 amps. All right, now I can go a little bit wider now that I'm on the wider set of my bevels. You can see my hands moving a little bit faster too, right? I'm trying to move this puddle as fast as it'll let me move. I could slow down. I could sit here and go slow. But if that puddle, if I notice that puddle will move faster with me, I'm gonna do that. And I'm not really filling. I'm not doing any filling. This is still like a lay wire technique, or you could call it submerged tungsten arc welding, because I stuck my tungsten and it gets submerged. <laughs> Let's do some freehanding for those that maybe want to freehand, right? I usually go for a 90 degree angle and I'm gonna use pretty much as many fingers as possible on the coldest part of a plate that I can so that I don't burn up my fingers. Get a TIG finger, get another glove, double glove it, anything you can do to keep your hand on the plate and steady. So now my torch angle changes dramatically. I'm more straight in than lean back, but I can make the exact same weld here but the biggest thing, now that my cup isn't helping me maintain my torch angle, if I'm moving up, naturally my hand wants to stay in one place and then I start leaning my torch back. I have to bring my hand up with my torch as I come up. Or another technique you can do is actually pull the torch away to where I don't have a puddle and then come back in. You see that? I didn't do any harm to the plate. I didn't do any harm to the weld because I don't have a puddle on it. Same weld. Free in, walk it, it don't matter. Get in where you fit in, let's switch to stick. The biggest thing when we're switching to stick welding is that we come over here, switch it to stick, and flip the polarities. So we're going to pull our lead out of here. Don't need that. We're going to just move the ground to the negative spot. Enter our stinger and positive. Switch to stick. Arc force, if you're running a 7018, negative side's pretty all right. So if I want to run hot with the 7018, I'm just gonna go negative 10, about close to that 100 mark, 90, 90 amps for a 332 rod. All right, let's stick weld. We're gonna put a single bead pass on here first. We're gonna do a little weaving. Strike the arc, get a puddle going, and I like to weave Everyone says pause on your sides. I pause on my sides, just not that long. But I stay in my puddle a long time. I'm not coming up out of it. I'm staying tight. 
My weaves are tight. I'm not making big steps. I'm trying to stay in this one spot and fill. Fill, fill, fill. I might do a little bit more pausing if I was using like an eighth inch rod. This thing's withering away. I might turn it down just a hair. See how far I went? If you're trying to go faster than that with the amount of filling I'm trying to do, you're gonna get undercut. You're gonna get lack of fusions in the toe. You're gonna fail x-ray. Bumped it down a hair. I think it's a little bit more manageable. You want as tight of an arc length as possible with this rod. Slow and close is gonna be your best friend. Now, I am watching the puddle, but I'm mainly watching the edges of it, right? The toes of that weld. I'm trying to fill to a certain point where I know I can cap at. I wouldn't say I'm weaving it. I'm just running a big stringer. Every 7018, you're gonna strike up ahead and come back. And the reason why you'll do that is so that you have a hot enough puddle by the time you get there to burn all that trash out. If you strike up right on top of it, you're gonna leave a lump, you're gonna leave porosity, and maybe some trash. You saw how high up I went too, right? About how many stringer bees do you think it would have take you to get this well done? Or this pass, this layer? Three, maybe four, right? You know, two rods for two stringers. All the way up, yeah. Check it out, same, I'm one, two, three, four. Same amount of metal, guys. There's no difference, I'm just carrying one bead compared to if I wanted to run a stringer up halfway and then strike up and then, you know, you know what I mean? Same amount of metal. When I get to the top so I don't leave a big divot, you saw how I got up there and just kind of worked it side to side. All right. Now we give it a jimmy. Let's take a good look at it. So we see where the bevel edges are. That's what I'm looking at the whole time, both sides of the bevels. You see down here, I've got a little bit more showing than I do up here. So I might need to be slowing down down here on the cap than I do up here on the top. Or I can grind down this to match that. Keeping our stringer beads inside our bevel lines doesn't matter what side you start on. I'm not doing circles, I'm not doing weaving. I am running a straight line and just waiting for it to fill. You can see the right side of my puddle is going outside my bevel edge, but my rod is inside the bevel edge. I'm trying to weld inside that line and let the puddle roll over. If you look at the end of the rod and you see a bunch of like drops coming off of it, just try to get a little closer. Try to get a little closer. Try to smother that rod, keep it nice and close. Let's look at this first bead. Check it out. We're trying to decide whether or not we could two it or three bead it. I have to cover half of this weld, right? To get proper overlap. And that means I would need to make a double size weld. I'm not gonna be able to do that. So what's gonna happen next, this next bead is gonna literally come from the highest point of this weld to about there. That way we get a nice crown over it. There's no low spots, no spots where an x-ray could d discrepancy of a low area, right? A heavy cap is always better for x-ray. X-ray shows density, yeah? So say you got a root that is sucked back. It's not all the way out, right? You can cap it heavy, cap it heavier, and make up for that thickness, and x-ray won't see it. You just gotta know that we're looking for density. For me, at 332, you don't need to do any motion. There's not a lot of metal it's throwing down. Nothing to really get kind of scared of. Slow and steady. Same rod angle, same travel speed. Trying to stay in the same spot. All right, last thing that I'll tell you, if you're trying to make your weld look pretty, someone give me a hand file. This is called dressing your weld. It's easier to do on pipe than plate. You'll take your file and just get the toes. Just get the toes. This will help make, if you have like just a skosh of undercut, like I got like a touch right here, I could probably file it out. Why would I show the inspector undercut if I can get rid of it, you know? And then now 
You got all these file marks on it, right? Which is kind of evidence. Mm -hmm. So you take your wire wheel and just press on it. Wow, it's gotta be a hot plate. Gotta be a hot plate. And that, that's how you'll dress it. Now I would say there's a, a skosh of undercut in there. Anyone got a light? Perfect. Like you can see the, all that undercut in those beads, mm -hmm. right? There's a little bit on that edge. There's none on this side. The reason why this side has a lot less is because everything was a lot fuller. Down here, you can see there's more undercut than up here. Why? Remember, it wasn't as full. So just make sure that you're very, very close to flush when you go to cap with the 332, okay? That was what I did wrong here. I wasn't quite flush enough. If I could have figured out a way to put a little bit more metal in there, I would have probably avoided all that and looked a lot more like that. So keep that in mind, but that's your combo weld. Well, Jeff, I think them kids had fun. I, do too. I hope they learned something. They are t they're as excited as can be. We had them practicing a little bit. A lot of them, a couple of them just right away yeah. took right onto it. And that had to be with this program that you built here in Huntsville. Do you have any advice for people that don't necessarily have access to a cool welding program this early on in high school? Or how can they get to do something like this? Man, I started in high school ag back in the 80s, and I learned the very, very, very basics of what I knew, and then what I learned between there and then was through work and, and everything, but if you really want it, just gotta find a way to do it. If you want it, you'll do it. Yeah, it's hard to tell you a high school kid, you need you to move to Huntsville to come yeah. to your program, but there are programs that yes, do exist, are. so if you're into welding and you want to have access to tools and you're a younger student, maybe do try to convince, find somewhere where you can have it. There's maker spaces, there's other shops that might even let you do an apprenticeship. apprenticeship. Find, where, find where you fit in and get in. 100%. So. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you guys on the next weld.